start my thank you okay. so good morning or almost afternoon wednesday um so we are going to be going over google my map um today so if you could open the slides they are in the chat one more time and then below the slides there's also a link to a website called ditch that textbook where there's 20 different ways uh, well they list 20 different ways that you can use google my map in the classroom so I was asking if you could please just open that um, website and scroll through quickly. Um, and if there's something that stands out to you or an idea that you have about using maps in the classroom, go ahead and put it in the chat. And take another minute. I see Tim saying mapping in income inequality as a way to visually represent data, mapping activity. Yes. Yeah, you can use um, language or find things that are near other things. I see Anna saying something about EL Civics and a resource map, which leads us um, into what we're what today's objective is so today you're going to be able to create a google my map you're going to be able to have some time to play around with google my map you're going to be able to navigate and learn um, the tools that are within google my map you'll be able to build a community resource map um, and you'll be able also i threw in some stuff about how you can share your google my map on a padlet um, so if you're not familiar with padlet the district has purchased Padlet, and so all of you have access to that. So we'll also be going over how you can um, access and use that with your students. Um, but why is really about this EL Civics and about this resource map activity that um, some of you are doing in your classes. So you would be able to build a community resource map or have your students build a community resource map. And you could have them share that map. Okay, so before we dig into the nitty gritty of the Google Maps, I was going to just show you some examples of some ways that I've used Google My Maps in the classroom. Um, so this is just one activity that I did where students, um, they had a reading about the Vietnam War. Um, you'll notice over here. And as they read through in red, there were places where they stopped and they went to their Google My Map and they had to find and label different places, right? So they had to find, you know, where Vietnam is and Laos and Cambodia. Um, they had to map points on the Tet Offensive, uh, different things like that. You can see this document, they were reading, they were stopping, they had a map, you can see over here, and, and then notice in their map, they were labeling different points. So they put a line at the 17th parallel, they found these major cities, they, they put a line where the Ho Chi Minh Trail was, um, and so different ways that they were interacting with a map. And as they were going through and finding those places on the map, they were able to embed pictures. You can see one here, they embedded a picture and then they describe um, what that picture is and what those places were. So Google My Maps is really cool. You can make it really interactive. Um, and then once students completed their map, you can see here on this image that they shared it on a Padlet. 
So a Padlet is kind of like a bulletin board uh, where you can share different resources or you can answer questions and everybody sees your answers. You can also respond to people by commenting or liking, giving hearts. So students place their Google Maps on the Padlet and then they went through and I gave them feedback and they also responded to each other. So I, it allowed them to close read, summarize, deepen their understanding and get familiar with um, a map. Um, another thing that I've seen a teacher do, I worked with a teacher last semester on mapping a unit. So their students map US imperialism by adding different layers to a map. So you can see here on this Google map, um, there's one layer called trade with Japan, buying Alaska, another layer called the Spanish American War. Um, so you can create layers on your Google map um, that you're able to click through uh, to map um, different things. Uh, I also, when I, I took a trip to Washington, D.C. with my dad and my daughter a couple years ago, and I created us a map of all the places that we wanted to go to. So it's easy to pull it up on my phone and find exactly like where I wanted to go and walking directions to those places. So practical uses for Google Maps as well. So if your students do something like create a resource map, um, they would, if they have Google on their phone, right, they can pull up Google Maps on their phone um, and find the pins that they created and get driving or walking directions to that location. So practical uses for Google, um, using Google My Maps. Okay, so we're gonna just get into it. We're gonna start by um, learning how to make a map. So how do you get to Google My Maps if you've never seen Google My Maps before? It's one of the options in your drive. Um, and I do wanna point out that I know people wanted training on drive and it's coming in the next couple weeks. Um, so we'll be doing this one. It's your Google Drive driving you crazy. Uh, I'm talking about organizations soon. Okay, so when you're in your Google Drive, if you click new, right, there's a big long drop down of all the different things that Google Suite has. So right, that's where you can get to your Google Docs and your sheets and your slides and your forms and your drawings and your sites, <laughs> all the things that Google has. So this is where you find, if you click more, Google My Map. You can also find all of these things in the waffle. It's another place where all the apps are, right? Your calendar, your drive, your docs, your slides. And if you keep scrolling down, there's maps. So if you click into new and you click into Google My Maps, it's gonna open you an untitled new map. It's a new, new map. So I'm gonna go over some of the stuff in this Google Map and then I'm gonna give you 15, 20 minutes with some tasks and create your own map. So you'll have time to play around with it um, after I go over all this stuff. So let's see, I'm gonna catch up in chat here. Yeah, so each student would have their own map. You can also share the map. So like when I made the Washington DC map, I shared it with my dad. Um, so he had the map as well. So you'll notice up here where it says um, add a layer, it also says share. So you can share the map with other people. Oh, it's asking me to title my map. So step number one, title your map. You can give your map a description. So once my map has a title, it's gonna allow me to share, just like all other Google documents, right? So if I wanted to share my map with Jen, I could add her, I could make her an editor or a viewer of my map. And then I could send her and she would get an email. So each student can have their own or students can collaborate on a map. So first step is always to label your map. So up here it said untitled, but I went in and labeled it fast practice map. If I click on that title again, it's gonna allow me to change the name of the map. So other things to get familiar with on a map, right, are the, are the layers. So if I wanted to title this layer, or say, I, let's see, I'm thinking about your community resource. I don't know what students have to find. Let's say if students needed to find um, like local libraries, right? They could title a layer, call it local libraries. Now, if they want to find local libraries, they're probably going to want to start by searching on the internet for the names of libraries in Salinas. I think there's like a Cesar Chavez library, right? 
So up in the top, there's this little search bar. If I can slow down. So if you type anything in this search bar, like say we want to find Cesar Chavez library. There's probably lots of Cesar Chavez libraries, right? But we can see that the top one says Cesar Chavez library, Williams road. So if I click that, it's going to take me there, right? And it's dropping me a little pin telling me here is where Cesar Chavez library in Salinas is giving me their website, their address, their phone number, different ratings in Google Maps. So now if I want to add this to my map, see this little plus sign that says add to map. I'm going to click. And now you can see that in my local libraries, there's Cesar Chavez library. I've, I've added that pin to my map. I can change the color of the pin. If I wanted it to be a specific color, right? I can also add, um, there's icons, right? If it was a parking lot, there's like a parking lot one, there's hiking. There's the little drink, like if it's a bar or restaurant. So there's icons that you can add also to customize um, your map. So once I've added Cesar Chavez Library in, if I wanted to have students do more, right, besides change the color, notice down here there's a little pencil, there's a camera, there is a direction, uh, and there's a trash. So the Paint bucket is just the style that I was talking about, changing the color, adding an icon, right? It makes it a little house instead of a pin, question mark, different icon. Then there's the little pencil, right? So when I click on the little pencil, notice it opens up that I could change the title if I wanted to, and I could give a description in here. So you could have students go to the library's website and read about it and maybe type something in there about the library. Maybe if you want them to find out what services the library offers, because oftentimes libraries have workshops or different things, you could have them investigate and then you could have them come in here and write like Monday, Thursday, Friday, library has open hours, right? Whatever it is that you wanted them to find, they could type in these directions or in this little box. You can also add an image. So if I click the little, the little camera, it allows me to upload an image from my drive or from my computer. I can even search, Google image search. So if I wanted to search, I could find a picture of Cesar Chavez library. And I could add that, right? And it's gonna add it right here to my to my pin, right? So I was able to title my, change the title of my pin, add a description about my pin, and even find an image about my pin. So when I save it, my local library, here's Cesar Chavez library. Now, if I'm a student and I put all of these pins on my map, I can pull it up on my phone. If I download the Google Maps um, app on my phone, when I click on my pins, I can click the little direction, and it, oops, it's going to give me I can get driving directions, biking or walking um, directions to the library. It added that as another layer. So, I can title my layer. So students, Right? If you had them find some local libraries, maybe you wanted them to find what's something that you would want them to find. I'm curious, I'm trying to make it as practical for your project. But the Salinas Police Department. Okay. So if we go up in here again and we title Salinas Police Department, there's a bunch of them, right? So you could have a layer that's called Police Department where they find all of the different police departments, right? And we would add it to our map. We could change this to police department. And if they kept searching, which one did we add? We added the one on Lincoln. We could find this one on East Alicell. And we could add that one to our cat. We can add that one to our map. We have police departments, we have the two, but notice that they're not, we're not able to differentiate them from these titles, right? So if we clicked on this first one that we found, it's gonna take us. 
going to take us there. And we could use that little pencil and change it so it's like um, Lincoln, so that we could differentiate which police department is which. This one was L cell. Let's go with the L cell, the new one. Right. So then you could have, um, you know, see it shows us the address, it shows us the website. Students could go to the website of whatever the resources that they're finding and maybe you have them use the website to find out some information and then they could head back to their pin. Again, press the edit and they could add um, information that they found in the box about the police department. So now we have a layer of libraries, we have a layer of police departments, we have these driving directions that it put it in a own layer. If a student adds a layer that they don't want, that they want to get rid of, notice the three little dots. Right, click on the three little dots and you can delete a layer. The space map button allows us to change, right? This is like street view map. If we wanted to have a different style map, this one shows us actual Google, um, like Google Earth view, right? Or you can change it to be um, different. I think most often this one or this one. I don't want people to use. Let's see. So can we remove some of the pins to simplify the map? Yeah, you can remove any of, oh, like remove these pins that we're talking about going to the Yeah, you can't remove these pins that are on here. These are just all the places that are in the Google map. So students could, right, if they found the Salinas Police Department, they could, right, and you just click and drag and drop around the map. But once you find a place, so here we found this Alice Al Police Department, students can also um, zoom in by scrolling, and it's so scrolling on their mouse or scrolling on their touchpad if they're on a computer, and you can scroll in and see what is you know, around this place. You could have students look up, um, you know, where they live and what is it that's around where they live. I saw somebody typed in their food bank. You could type in food bank. So here, showing me here's food bank for Monterey County. I could add that to my map. Notice that it added it up here to my library's map. So if I wanted to add a layer called food bank, I can just drag. I clicked on that and I dragged it down. Well, now it's in here. I can drag it down to that layer if it gets added into the wrong layer. You have a Google pin everywhere, the distracting. Any other questions about a Google map? I'm gonna have time to let you play around with it. You could have students create a Google map instead of a presentation for one of your things. You could also, um, I've seen teachers where students created a map and then they used like a screencasting um, extension like Screencastify uh, or Loom to record, like they went through their pins and they verbally explained the things that they pinned and then they shared that screencasting with the teacher so they were practicing their speaking. Um, you can also, let's see, you can also draw a line. So you could add a driving route if you wanted to go from like one place to another place, how would you get there? Um, or you can do lines and shapes. I've had, well, my daughter, she just had to do 13 colonies. And so she had to use this shape tool and you can draw shapes. So she had to draw boxes around the 13 um, colonies. So if you wanted students to add lines, you could have them add lines to circle, you know, like around a place. Like, oops. 
You can change the color of the line. Oh, I don't want a new line. I could change the title of my line. I don't know what this place would be called. You could add a picture, different things. I don't know how much you would use line, um, more so just the pin. Just make sure I went over everything. Okay, so we went over how to title your map. Important to first title your map. We went over how to edit your title and description by clicking on the title. We talked about the search bar, how you can use the search bar to type in any location. And like Google Maps are worldwide. So I've even seen where, um, you know, I've done a PD on Google Maps before that wasn't geared toward this. And I had everybody go to the map and they had to pin their, their favorite vacation spot, right? Or you could have people pin, um, you know, where they were born or where their family um, originates from like there's different things you could also use a map and make it visible or editable by everybody so that everybody's sharing different pins on the map I've been at a conference uh, down in Palm Springs where one of the presenters said everybody pin their favorite place that they've eaten and then as the whole room we had this Google map of all these restaurants that people recommended so other ways that you can also use Google um, my map so you can type anything in the search bar you could type a city you can type a country, you can type a place, you can type a restaurant, right, and find different things in the map. And that when you find it, that little pin pops up, and that's where you're able to title it, um, give it a description, add a picture, those different things. And then again, you can add layers to differentiate different parts of things that you're pinning on your map. When I did my Washington DC map, my layers were days. So I had day one, the places that we wanna to go to. Day two, I was trying to map out like what things were close to each other um, on different days. My dad thought I was crazy, but. You can drop your own pin. I guess I didn't show that. Up here, there's a little pin. I can choose this and I can drop my own pin. So if there's something I wanna pin, but when I search it, I can't find it, but I know that this is here, it's just not on the map yet. I could, or if I want to drop a pin at where I live, I can drop a pin anywhere and give it um, a name. So if there's something that you're searching for that you can't find, you can drop a random pin, right, or pick a pin and drop it wherever you'd like to. Here's the 13 colony one I was talking about, mapping the 13 colonies. Um, I've also seen where uh, they use the line tools to map out different states. So this one they were mapping out, um, it's a state report. They were doing a report of California. They used the lines to draw around the state of California and then they had to pin major cities and the capital um, and different things about the state and each student, students had different states. Uh, this was another one where they pinned the mission. So they went through California and pinned all of the different missions, like a fourth grade um, map. And then this is that 13 colony ones I was talking about, the fifth grade 13 colonies. They used the line tool to outline the 13 colonies, and then they were able to shade in the colors. Uh, and they stuck them, you can see here, on their map. You can see in this little GIF that if you use the line tool, which I didn't do a good job of continuously, it'll add it all in one spot. So if I took the line tool and I went, it doesn't work when I go. Oh. Right now I have a polygon and I could name that. I don't know, whatever, water. And again, I could change 
the color, which is how they changed the colors for those 13 colonies. I can change the border width and the transparency. Brianna, there's some questions in the chat. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm seeing a bunch of examples, I'm trying to find out where I left off. Yeah, Wi-Fi, I see something about Wi-Fi range. So you can't get rid of the other pins on the map. No, you can't get rid of the pin, like these pins of places that are on here. You can't get rid of them. If you click on these pins, it'll take you there. So if you wanted to learn about this consultation place, you could click here and learn more about it. These are places that are like in Google Maps. Um, you can change the base of the map. Let's see if there's a base that gets rid of those pins. I don't think there is. It just changes the way they look. There might be, like this one looks to be a little bit more cleaner than the other one. So depending on the base map you use, you can get rid of, it looks like, some of the pins. This one doesn't look like it has them. Have these little bus stations. Let's see. Uh, you could use this to tag and identify small neighborhoods in the area. Yeah, they could use lines to like draw neighborhoods. Um, I like all of your examples that you're putting and that you're sharing in there. Is it po is it possible to publish the my map to a website or our school website? Yes, it's possible to publish the map to the school website. So once you make your map um, and you save your map. You can embed it. So these three, these first three little dots, if I click on these, I can do a new map. I can make a copy of a map. I can open a new map if there's another map that I need to get to. And there's this button for embed on my site um, or ex export the map. Oh, so I need to change my share setting. So I have to make my share setting so that anybody can view it. Anyone with the link can view. Done. Now if I go embed on my site, it's going to give me the embed code and I could throw that map on my website. You could also link the map, right? If you just took the link up here with like a click here for a map or embed the map. So then if it's embedded, it's interactive. The user visiting the website can click on, you know, a pin and find out about that resource, for example? Yep. If it's embedded, then they would be able to click around. If it's embedded, there would even be the search bar and they could search for other things. They wouldn't be able to leave pins, um, but they could search anywhere on the map. So yeah, I did, I did, I know there was a project at the beginning of the year that IT was working on, on creating a map of different like free Wi-Fi for students. I don't know if that got put on the website or if that project, I wasn't in charge of it. I don't know if it got done. Let's see. Yes, so we did that. Yes, you can publish it. Yeah, this map isn't showing any pins. Well, so when I click on it, it takes me to those pins that I pin. Where's that house? There it is. What about doing this on your phone? You can do it on your phone. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, A map on your phone. Robert, can you mute? There's some background. So if you, I'm trying to see here, if you um, do it on your phone and you download the Google Map um, app on your phone, and you share that map with your email, it pops up on your thing. So like on my phone, I can go here and I can see maps that I've saved. So on here I can find back in time, but I can find my Washington DC map. Like I go here and it says my saved places. Um, and then it's my map that I have saved in Washington of Washington DC. So if your phone is logged, like if you're logged into your phone with the same account that you're logged into where you're creating your map, you can easily um, go to your map app 
and then you can, if you share it, um, or if you created it, you'll be able to find it if it's in the same email. And then from your phone, you can also uh, create a map. Let's see. I've never done it from my phone. I've only opened one one here that I've made, but I know there's a way. So on my phone, it's calling it a list. So I can make a list and pin different places and I can make that private or shared or public. So it looks a little bit different, but it's totally doable from your phone. And there might even be, let's see, in the app store, if there's a separate, because I was just on Google Maps, but there might be, so there's Google My Maps. So I was just doing it from Google Maps on my phone, but there is a Google My Maps app. So if I download that, looks like I'll link it to my work account. And then beyond on here, I can even see where I have this fast practice map that I made just made right now. So if I open that, it shows me all those pins. I don't know if you can see my phone, all those pins that we um, just made. So yes totally doable on your phone, which is one good thing about Google stuff, you know, Google Docs and Slides and Maps, all of those are really user-friendly on your phone. Okay, what time do we have? Oh, I'm over time as always, or over my timeline that I was going for. There's that base map feature that we were talking about. And so I was gonna give you 15 minutes to try to um, practice. So you're going to go to Google Maps, Google My Maps, right? Remember, you can get there from your drive in the drop down or from the waffle, create a map and practice labeling three or pinning three community resources that you think are important. Um, provide a description. Remember, clicking that little pen that lets you edit it. Um, you can add a photo in the camera. You can even add videos, which is kind of cool. Um, add a layer and rename it try drawing lines and shapes. Um, and we're gonna do this 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna briefly, I'll show you, well, maybe let's do this 10 minutes so that we can um, spend time on Padlet. So 10 minutes. Get in there, mess around, and then you're going to share your map on a Padlet. And I'm going to show you how to use Padlet. Feel free to ask questions in the chat if you um, have any as you're going along the way.
I'm talking and I'm muted. So you can just drag and drop to move them. If you accidentally put it in the wrong layer, I can click it and hold down and then I can drag it up or down. That's not working for me for some reason. Do you have an added layer? Like I could add a, a layer. Yes, I added a new layer and then when Should I try to drag it, it doesn't move. Make sure you're keeping, I mean, press down on it. Like if I just press and pull, it's letting me. I think also if I edit that layer, let me change it from there. Oh, I got it actually. I yeah, I think you kind of click it more towards the pin. Yeah, okay. Thanks. You can't find your map. If you go into um, your drive, or if you're, if you created a map, it should pop up down here somewhere in your drive. So see my map is showing up here in my drive. If you search in your drive, you can search for where it says type, and then you can search for. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any of those options. I just recently, I just recently <laughs> reinstalled the computer and so now everything is kind of messed up. But there's no word to search for it. Uh, there used to be on apps, but now there isn't. Can you get to your Google Drive? Yeah. It doesn't look like this. Is it? Uh, yeah. So up here in the search, you should be able to search um, for your map. Like if I put in map, it should pull up. But I haven't made a map yet. Oh, you haven't made a map yet. So then you're going to oh, go to new. I, no, you that's can, it. I can't. I can't get to the app. I can't get to it. it, and I don't have this icon on my Google. So where, where I found mine was, um, like you said, if you go to your drive, you just go to new, more, and then there you will find it, Google My Maps. That's how I found it, because I tried looking at, through the WAF one, I couldn't find it either. So go to your drive. Well, that's it. I'm when I go into Google, it doesn't give me the option of searching. Just go to your drive. Go through my drive. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just go to, the, go to your drive and then um, okay. And then go oh, where it okay. says more and then Google my Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Brianna, where do you want us to put our maps? Um, I'm going to show you how to put it on a Padlet in two minutes. Okay, on the map, where do I go in to put in the name or bring anything up? So do you have something that looks like this, a blank map? 
Uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, it's just the United States, yes. So if you use the little search bar and type in anything that you want to find. Oh, okay. Okay. And you can add that pin to your map. Have about five more seconds to play around. Okay. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes, 10 minutes left. So quickly, I want to show you Padlet. So if you've never used um, Padlet before, it's like a interactive discussion board. Um, let me show you an example. So on a Padlet, an older one that I have. Students can, or teachers can, anybody can, right? You can create a Padlet and they can um, post their right here we go so here was a um, padlet where I had groups of students answering questions about federalist papers so you can see that it is um, it's like a virtual whiteboard right where they were able to type a title and type some some words I have this one turned off so that they can't comment on each other but you can turn on commenting so that when students uh, type their information, other students, as you can see down here, comment, can leave comments. It's like an interactive uh, discussion board. So for you, you're gonna log into Padlet with this. Um, I'm gonna put this in the chat to access the premium ones that the district purchased. The free one, you can only make three Padlets at a time. The premium allows you to make as many Padlets as you want. Um, so there is that. So if you click on that, you're all in there. You should be able to log in with Google um, and have access to the district Padlet dashboard. So when you log in, it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna be able, you can make a Padlet, join a Padlet, manage your Padlet. You can choose different ways that you want to set up your Padlet. You can have it where it's kind of just messy and everywhere. You can have columns. Uh, you can have one straight line, a stream. So there's different ways to set up your Padlet. Um, when you create a Padlet, you have to change the share setting. So because uh, if you're using the district domain, it's like protected to be only within our domain and our teachers. So when you create one, which you're not going to have time to right the second, but you can play around with it. You can change those share settings. So you're going to want to go into the share settings. You'll notice they're up here in the top corner where it says share. And you'll want to change the privacy to secret um, can write. So that means anybody that is given the link to your Padlet will be able to write on your Padlet. If people aren't logged in, it won't show up as their name. 
So you'll want to have them um, put their name somewhere on the tablet if you're collecting uh, work on a tablet. So what I want to do is have you share your map on this tablet. So I created this tablet called Google My Map. I'm going to stick it in the chat so you can see what it looks like. Students can use it without a district account. Yeah, you just have to make sure that your share settings um, are secret, can, visitors can write, and then anybody can write on it. You can also make it password protected if you wanted to, if you were worried about other people writing on it. Um, then their students would, you would make a password and give it to them, and then they would use that password to be able to write on the Padlet. But I've found that if you just make it secret, anybody can write, people aren't going to go searching for it. So if you open this Padlet, it'll take you here. You just click anywhere, and that'll allow you to start a post. So you can title it. You title it your name, and then you can embed your map using this link. You could just place the link to your map right in here, right? We could go here, copy over this link, paste it in there. And then my map is going to pop up here. So if you have your students post their map on a Padlet, then all your students could see everybody's map and they could click on each other's and open them and see what they pin. Um, and they could also leave comments. So there's settings that you can um, do in Padlet that show if you want to allow people to comment. So I wanted to make sure that I had that turned on. So I can turn on commenting. And I can turn on uh, reactions. I usually turn on the like one. And then save. So now everybody's posting their maps in there. Other students could go through and look at them, and they could come down here and leave feedback or comments. You're going to want to make sure that your map is public. Change your map share settings to public so that everybody can view it, and then your link should show. You access the districts by going to this, go to this um, link, and log in with Google. with your school, Google, and then you'll have access to the, the Padlet to be able to create your own Padlet, unlimited. And if you're having trouble, you can shoot me an email um, and we can set up time to go over it because I know that Padlet has a lot and so we did all of it on Google Maps and then it was like 10 minutes, Padlet, here it is. Um, So make sure that you make your Padlet, or make sure you make your map public. Because right when I'm clicking on like Tim's map, or if I click on see it on Carrie's map, when I click on Carrie's, it lets me go to it. So now I can see. See, I don't have edit access, so I can just see it looks like this. I can see the things that Carrie's pinned, and I can see she pinned John Steinbeck. I can click that, and it's going to take me in there. Again, I can use my little mouse, scroll in as far or as close as I want to. She added this video. Tour, it's a tour. Explain how to make it public again, yeah. So when you, oh, your map, let's see. So when you go, when you're in your map, there's the little share button next to add a layer, share, or preview. If you click share, you're gonna wanna go down here to change. And then you're gonna wanna make it, anybody with the link can view. And then you'll use that link, copy that link, and it'll change this link as well. So 
that way anybody can view my map. Now, if I wanted to be working on this map and I wanted anybody to view it, but like I want Carrie to edit it with me, right? I can say, type Carrie up here and I can make her an editor and then I can send it to her and she'll get an email notifying her that like this map is now with her. So students can collaborate on the same map you know, a group of students or one or two students, and then they can make it viewable by the rest of their um, peers. Can I click on your map? Yeah. Here it is. The same map. So I could also see creating maps to put on your website um, for students, you know. So you can have some create maps, you could create maps for students. I wanted to point out one last thing before we're done, because we only have a couple minutes, is that in Padlet, um, students can use film, voice, or screencasting like from within Padlet. So you could have students put their map. I've had students, um, like, where's my map? Down here. If I edit my, oops, edit my pin, if I click these three little buttons, there's other things that I can do. And so one of them is film. So I could film a video of myself talking and put it on a Padlet, kind of like um, people use Flipgrid or I can record like a voice note, or I can do a screencast. So a screencast allows me to record my screen. There's an extension that I have to download that I don't have turned on right now. Um, but I have seen a teacher who had students make maps, and then they went to screencast from Padlet, and they screencasted their map. And then they published their screencast to the Padlet, so other students were able to go and watch that student explaining their map. So lots of different ways um, to use Maps and Padlet, or use Padlet by itself, or use Maps by itself. So hopefully those two tools are helpful for you. Um, how did I put an image in the Padlet post? So if I click anywhere, I can put a link, I can put an image. I can upload something, I can upload a file from my drive. upload a file from my computer, I can put it by a link, I can do a Google image search. Then I can go up here and type. Spell the name wrong. So students can um, type their work on a tablet. Lots of different ways that you can use it. Okay, well, we're at 12. So in these slides, there's a Google Maps Ideas and Resources page. So if you click here on these slides, I'll go ahead and stick it in the chat. There's a resource document to help you if you get stuck. It has um, some ideas and pre-made maps that you can use. Um, and it also has resources down at the bottom that you can use. And that's all I have for you today. So if you want to use maps and you get stuck, feel free to reach out. If you want to learn more about Padlet, feel free to reach out. If we want to do a whole session on Padlet, we could do that in one of our next tech ones. Um, but I think for some of you that are pretty tech savvy, when you get into Padlet, you'll see that it's pretty, it's pretty user friendly. I know Robert is our superstar tech user and he won't have any problems. And if for some reason you can't get the district premium one, just send me an email and I'll double check that your email's in the, in the roster. And then to join our Facebook group if you haven't heard about it. Jen and I started a state, an SUHSC Facebook group, so if you're a Facebook user, join our group. We've been sharing resources, and teachers have been sharing resources. 
and have a great the Facebook group is called SUHSD Better Together. The link is in the slides. And I'll stick it right here. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for, for joining us. Um, and definitely I'm going to join the Facebook group right now. Thank you, Brianna. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you in a couple weeks for Google Drive. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, <clears throat> Anna, for when you want me to do Google Drive so we can get it blocked off on my calendar. Oh, I thought you sent you the email, sorry. Um, it's, let me look at it right now. It would be, if it's okay with you, uh, the 24th of this month. Um. But if we can please <laughs> put um, 12 instead of 11. Yeah, I'm open right now on the 24th. So send send me the um, add me to the invite so we can get it on there. Of course, I'll send it to you right now. And then if is is it okay if we do it at 12? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Brianna. Yes. Can you add ES? I don't know if it's too late to do it, but in the Facebook group, you don't list ESL as one of the subjects. Okay, I can add that later. You could just click other. Um, okay. Other, okay, because we're we're never included in any of these. Oh my God! So other other certificated. Okay. Thank you, Brianna. Yeah. I just send you the information. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your week, everybody. Reach out if you need anything. Sure will. Thanks, Brianna. Bye. Bye-bye.